Now this question 8 which is the question of uh, rotational motion here they say that two rotating bodies A and B of masses M and 2M mass ratio has been given with moment of inertia IA and IB and the relation of moment of inertia also is given that B has larger moment of inertia compared to A have equal kinetic energy of rotation. So you have to correlate kinetic energy with angular momentum. Now they are saying if LA and LB be their angular momenta respectively then you have to find out the relation between the angular momentum of A and B. So as you have energy is equal to uh, P square by 2M for linear motion so here also you can say energy this is uh, L square by twice of I this is what you have the relation and they are saying kinetic energy is same. Now you have to see that if this is same then if the moment of inertia is large then naturally angular momentum will also be large here I cannot use the relation of mass because nothing has been mentioned about the bodies. So that mass relation is not relevant here what is relevant is the relation of moment of inertia. So if B has larger moment of inertia then B should have larger angular momentum as well and for that matter I will be marking answer 3 because here it says that angular momentum of B is greater than that of A. So our answer for this question number 8 will be answer 3 you understand. Now let us switch over to next question that is question 9. Now once again this uh, question 9 is based on rotational motion here you have to compare the rotational kinetic energy of sphere and cylinder. It says that a solid sphere of mass m and radius r is rotating about its diameter and a solid cylinder of the same mass and same radius is also rotating about its geometric axis that means about the uh, axis which is passing through its center of mass and along the length with an angular speed twice that of the sphere. So you have to find out the ratio of their kinetic energy. Now see in this ratio what is kinetic energy I will be taking half i omega square. So first you have to take for a sphere now what is the moment of inertia for a sphere this will be 2 by 5 mr square isn't it and then I am taking this rotation speed omega omega square and same thing half i omega square you have to write down for cylinder. So half moment of inertia I am writing mr square by 2 for cylinder and this rotational speed they are saying twice of the rotational speed of the sphere. So you can see here half half is anyway cancelled this becomes 4, 4 divided by 2, 2, 2, 2 will be cancelled and ultimately it will be ratio 1 is to 5 this is what you will be obtaining. So you have this second option as you can see 1 is to 5 so I will be marking answer 2 for this uh, question number 9. Now let us switch over to question 10. Now once again this uh, question is from the same chapter that is system of particles and rotational motion. Here you are using the concept of moment of inertia as well as the center of mass. Here it says that a light rod of length L has two masses M1 and M2 attached to its two ends. So it is something like uh, you have a rod and uh, M1 M2 they are attached. Mass of the rod is negligible and length L is given to you. Now they are asking to calculate the moment of inertia of the system about an axis perpendicular to the rod and passing through the center of mass. So if you go by the conventional method of doing this question you will have to first find out the center of mass of this and then you have to take the distance of these two masses from this center of mass then you use the expression m1 x1 square plus m2 x2 square. But I am suggesting that you avoid that approach and convert this two body problem into single body problem by using the concept of reduced mass. Whenever your axis is passing through the center of mass you can simply say that the moment of inertia of this kind of system is say reduced mass m and the length whatever you have mr square. If it is point mass what will be the moment of inertia mr square. For m you have to take the reduced mass of the system and for r it will be the separation between these two masses. Now this reduced mass is nothing but it is a standard expression m1 m2 upon m1 plus m2 this is the kind of thing you happen to use in simple harmonic motion as well you understand reduced mass and for r you will be taking the separation between them so it will be l square. So this is the same expression you will be getting even if you follow the conventional method of doing. So I will be suggesting this as a general result and I am marking the answer m1 m2 l square upon m1 plus m2 
if you look, look at the options you will find that the first option is saying something like that so for this question we are marking answer 1 that is question 10 now let us switch over to next question that is question 11 